Hey guys, happy Easter. I wanted to share with you something that came up in the members live yesterday. After I did my entire show, I ended on kind of a rant, but it turned into a message that I just feel needs to be shared with the entire community. So I cut this part out of the members live from yesterday, and I just wanted to share it today because today is about hope. It's about new beginnings, and it's about the best still coming. So please take a minute, listen to this message. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. God bless. I love you all. Take care. And I hope you enjoy this message. You know, tomorrow's Easter. So Easter is, uh, it, you know, Christmas is the one that gets all the the accolades, all the the fanfare, all the mainstream attention, um, the seasonal fun it is. But the truth is Easter represents the most important thing. And, you know, the most important thing is that we, we were given a fresh start. And that's, that's what, you know, the whole Christian, whatever you believe, religion, faith, mythology, whatever you think it is. Um, for me, it's everything, honestly. Um, it, that's what it's all about. It's about a new start. And so to me, tomorrow has a lot more meaning than the markets, all that. Um, and you guys already know what I feel about this year, 2024. I feel like it's a crux year in history where after this year, everything's different. But I also believe this is the year when the, the crooked world systems as they've been are being dismantled and putting up their last fight. I think after this year, it's going to be all downhill for them. This was their, this is their last stand. Uh, and they're fighting hard. And that's why we're seeing so much insanity going on in the world right now is that fight. But tomorrow is, is ultimately about the greatest hope of all is that the, you know, Jesus died, came back and gave us freedom, transferred it to us, transferred a new identity to us. Uh, and there's just, it's always meant to, there's a lot of people who believe that like, um, the end of the world is going to be this horrible, scary thing. And the world has to get worse before Jesus comes back. All that. I don't subscribe to that belief. I don't think it's biblical. I believe things are going to continue getting better. And I believe history proves that the world has gotten better ever since 2000 or ever since Jesus came back, which is 2000 years ago. Okay. And so because I believe that, I believe that this is just a blip. This is a hard time. It's a, a shift time where, but it's, it's ultimately going to lead to very good things. So we are going to just celebrate tomorrow. I'm going to be as hopeful as ever tomorrow. I'm going to be believing that a lot of these things lined up this year on purpose. It's not accidental. Um, so that we can, you know, get, we can have signs of, uh, to, to, con to carry us through what might be a hard year before things get better. I think the next few months leading up to the election might be some of the craziest months we've ever seen in our lives. I, I don't know what to expect. I don't know how bad it'll get. I don't know how weird it'll get anything like that. I think that we're going to see um, more false flag events. I think we're going to see, we might possibly see stuff more like that bridge going down. Cause I do think that was an attack now. Um, and it might've been an inside job attack for all we know. Uh, I just think it's going to get crazier and crazier and the news is going to get louder and louder in our face. And it's up to us to maintain our sanity through this too, to not give up, to believe that even though they're broadcasting every horrible thing in our faces, that that's still more goods happening than bad. And we have to believe that we do. And I do believe that. I believe that every day. I believe day to day, more good things are happening than bad. It's just they're quiet. The good things are quiet. Whether it's somebody helping somebody else out with finances or, you know, taking care of their ailing grandma, whatever it is, I think the acts of kindness and generosity and everything in the world are going on more every day than everything else. And it's and that builds up. And I think the same thing's happening with corruption. I think Trump, a bunch of people working behind the scenes. To, to, to move our country forward. I think there's a lot going on in the markets to fix this robbery, this highway robbery of retail for, for decades. Um, and, and this is it. And we are, like it or not, 
being in these plays, we're in the front lines of this. We have positioned ourselves to be at the forefront of this fight, like it or not. And some days it sucks. Some days it's really hard. And but we got to believe we got to believe the reward is going to be great. And when in the, in the Gospels, it talks about when Jesus died, the disciples truly believed that Jesus was uh, who he said he was. But on top of that, they thought he was going to ascend the throne of Israel and make Israel the great kingdom again. Even though Jesus completely told them no, they thought he was going to reestablish Israel's dominance that it had during the time of David and Solomon. And there's a good argument to be made that the reason Judas betrayed Jesus is because he thought that if he could force Jesus into a war through these attacks and everything, that what it would do is it would force Jesus to finally turn, go into action and reestablish Israel. There's a, there's a case to be made for that. But regardless of what you believe, when he died, their hope was completely gone. They you know, they were destroyed. They thought it's over. We've lost everything. And you got to remember Judea at that time um, was in a terrible place. Uh, the Roman Empire was at its crux. I mean, it was at the, the high point with Augustine. Uh, I'm sorry, Augustus. He uh, it, it was a, the height of the Roman Empire. Caesar Augustus was the, the Pax Romana was going on, which means Rome controlled everything. So there was peace. Um, and the Jews had no hope of, of getting out of that. And they desperately wanted their freedom back. They wanted their nation back. And so Jesus comes and has no, <laughs> no desire to do that. But they thought that's what he was doing. But on top of that, he spoke of this life that you could have in this connection to God that was so much better and greater than anything they'd ever imagined. And then he's gone and he's killed. And they're like, what do we what do we do with this? This man we saw do all these miracles. This guy we thought would uh, save the world for us. Um, this this man we thought could was God. He died. You can't die if you're God. So their their whole entire belief system was completely destroyed overnight. And not only that, they watched him suffer and 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 they had to make decisions like, do we do we stay in this? Do we continue to do this? And so they're just in mourning. But then. Three days later, he's back after they had just seen him go through one of the most brutal deaths a person could ever endure. Um, and that's that's what it's like sometimes, guys. I mean, it you know, the, that that idea of it's always darkest before the dawn. That's that's a biblical idea, because it says that when Jesus died, the, it went dark for three hours. And, um, you know, and, and also spiritually speaking, it was so dark um, until he came back. But then when he came back, you know, he showed, that's what Easter is all about. All of a sudden, everything they believed was validated. They and, and also, not only was everything they believed validated, it was so much bigger than they'd ever imagined. Their eyes became open to how much bigger, whereas they thought Jesus had come to save uh, Israel. The truth was Jesus had come back to save the world. And it was just so much bigger than they'd ever imagined. Uh, and the rest of the Gospels, I mean, in, in Acts and everything, it's all about Peter's mind still expanding. Like Peter was a racist. He hated everybody who wasn't Jew until he has this encounter with God where God's like, it's time to realize, like, I came to save everybody, not just the Jews. And, and so Peter's eyes are open, but he goes through this process. Um, and even at one point fights with the Apostle Paul. And so... The, the point is, is that their eyes kept getting opened, but it was all because he came back and validated what they'd gone through in the first place. Guys, we are going through something like that where it's so dark right now and it's so hard that the only thing to hold on to is we have to hold on to what we've been told and what we've seen with our own eyes. And for the disciples in the Gospels, it was all the miracles and Jesus' teachings and all the things he'd done, they had to hold on to that when after he was gone and they they were like, what do we do with this? Well, that's us. We, we have to hold on to the things we've seen. We have to hold on to um, the, uh, the story we know is true. We have to hold on to those things because 
when our prices are going so down and, and nothing seems right when or if it's political and it's like when Trump's being attacked from every angle and, and uh, there are all these illegals are coming in, just ruining so many people's lives and and they're just run free and they're being given money. And it just feels like, God, what is it all for? Is there any hope? Is anything we believe is true worth fighting for anymore? Can we have any shot? And it, it gets like that right before the end. And so tomorrow, whether you're a Christian or not, um, if I, I hope that tomorrow you you look in, to find reasons for hope. I hope that you look to believe that new beginnings are always possible. And historically speaking, they are. It happens all the time. It just doesn't happen when you expect it. And so we're in a fight, and it's going to win. We are going to win. I don't know what it'll look like when we do. I don't. I don't know if finger will go to 2000 or 250 I, I can't tell you that that final price will be, but we will win. And from there, it'll be another win and another win. And once we start winning, there'll be a, there'll be a, 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 an effect, a, a buildup effect that finally has to blow up. And so, guys, we got to just believe. You got to hold on to that and you got to take what you know and you got to fight. And here's the deal. If, 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 and this is a big if because I don't think it's even possible. But if you take the one, the point zero 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 one percent chance that nothing good uh, came comes out of this financially, because the good is it's already come out of it. If you take our community, the friendships made along the way, education, all that, there has been good out of it. But if the financial breakthrough never happens, if by some way they they get out, they screw us all over. You have to ask yourself, like, I lost money, but am I glad I fought? And will I fight again so that next time I win? And that's something everybody has to answer themselves. But for me, I'm a fighter and I'll always fight because I, to me, it's a, my life is about legacy. I don't even understand people who don't want kids. I don't even understand people who live for themselves. It's like that to me, it's what's the point of life if you don't leave some behind? Um, and, and so I would much rather have a hard life, but it'd be rewarding in the end. Um, than an easy life where I just pleasured myself the whole time by doing whatever I wanted and didn't do anything else. And when I die, nobody ever remembers me or they remember me as a selfish guy. I don't want that. Like, and so, but everybody has to answer that question for yourselves. For me, we're going to win this fight. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Otherwise I want to be here. But I also know that if something happened, I don't, I'll win the next fight because I'll be better the next time. I'll be better. You guys will be better. And this will not, they will not win. They will not. But it's going to take us to dig in deeper than they'll dig in. And I already think we're there. I, I really do. But my mindset is it doesn't matter because I'll, I'll still beat them. And that's, that's how we got to think about it. percent. We just need one. We just need one. Think of it as accrued interest. When we finally break out, when one of them breaks out, the accrued interest is that we get two or three more after this, or maybe four or five more. That's the accrued interest. And so even if finger doesn't go, say fingers first, and it doesn't go to a thousand, doesn't go to 2000, it goes to 300. Well, we take that 300 we made from that and we blitz the hell out of GTII. And, and then we, who knows what it goes to. But then we take that and we blitz the hell out of ZJYL. And then we go hit Wolf. And then we go hit GDC. And then we go hit Rum. And if these are all allowed to go in a row like that, watch the F out. <laughs> because that that will be worth so much more than just one having gone. And I guarantee you, when, when I was in AMC for a year and a half, when we were in AMC... The vast majority of the people in that play, 95 to 97%, were only thinking, I need AMC to be everything. They were all in. And that's why you see people still clinging to AMC, despite the fact that everything's gone against them, including being betrayed by their own company. That's why they cling on there, because they didn't see any other hope. They didn't have a strategy. They didn't educate themselves. We did. But what did we do? We went below. We went below and we found something, in my opinion, is even better, but harder to find. Because it's not a big name. It doesn't have 50 YouTubers talking about it, 100 YouTubers talking about it. It has three or four. 
but we found it. And one of those I had to start. <laughs> I had to start. It was basically just William and, and Lou for a little bit. Um, so we, we, but we found them and now we've done the work and it's all going to pay off. That's, that's how I see it. And what did we do? We didn't, I, I don't see GTI as like, or finger as us making a stupid decision after AMC doing the same thing. I don't think that at all. I see it as we adapted and we got better and we found something even better. And along the way, we keep finding more that might not be as big, but they'll still do something. And I, I'm telling you guys, I, I have so much peace about this. It's unreal. After all this time, after all this fight, after all the money I've lost, I still have so much peace because I just, I, I've gone through this so many ways. I've gone through it with my mind going through the knowledge and logic and the DD. I've gone through it with my spirit through meditation and prayer and dreams. And, and I've gone through it with my emotions where I've felt the losses so much. And I kept building myself up and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I have applied all of that into this to the point where I just, I am so locked in on these. And I just, you could call it blindness and maybe it is, but I don't think it is. I think it's, I have, I've closed the gaps and, and made an airtight case. And that's how I feel in my, my, my soul about this. My, I just, I, I so believe we're going to win and win big and it's going to be bigger and better than we all thought, but it's also going to be different. Just like when Jesus came back, the, their eyes had to be opened. It says that when they were walking, he was walking with some disciples on the road to Emmaus after he came back and they didn't recognize him. They just thought he was some dude. And they, and they started talking about like, Oh, did you hear the, the, the man, Jesus Christ died. And he starts talking to him and he goes through the entire old Testament and speaks about it in a way that they never heard. And it says their hearts burned like fire as they heard him speaking about it because he was just opening, unveiling the truth to them. And that's what happens by the way, when you actually learn scripture the right way, your heart goes on fire. Like, Oh my God, it makes sense now. And that's what he was doing. He was, he was showing them all the ways that the Old Testament had just talked about Jesus coming and how, how there was no way it wasn't him. And then at the last minute, it says they looked at him and they recognized him because their eyes had now been opened. And then he disappears. <laughs> I love Jesus' style. He disappears because he had to go on to the disciples after that. But the point is that when it happens, you know, it's going to look different than we thought, but it's going to be bigger, better, and uh and more meaningful than we thought too that's what i believe i believe we are heading whether it's and, and i'm not just talking the markets now i'm talking our finances the markets um because because also think about this think about what you've invested with your time energy and your brain okay the education you received not only will you win from this but now for the rest of your lives you will make better decisions. You will take more calculated risks and you also take risks because you'll be like, screw this. You guys think this is hard? Look what I've been through. That's what happens. You build momentum when you go through something like this and it changes not just now, not just in an instant. It changes your life. So if you're hoping to make 10 million from GTI or 100 million from GTI finger and all this and say you made 8 million instead, you could look at it as a disappointment or you could say, I still made that money. I still changed my life. And look, now what I know from this, I'm going to use the rest of my life and the rest of your life, you prosper more because of what you went through here. It's always bigger than you think. It, it always is when you become a part of this. And I think we are headed to such an all-consuming victory. And I think it's going to be financial, personally. I think it's going to be in the markets with corruption and, and our economy once it, it is purged and we rebuild. And I think it's going to be political. And, and I think it's going to be a consuming victory that changes literally everything. And we're going to look back someday and we're going to look to 2024 and we're going to say, we were part of that fight. We had the balls to be a part of that. We had the gall to step up and be and join into something and take advantage and not just sit back and watch Netflix and hope things would get better. No, we, we stepped up and I, we made changes and now our, our children's lives are better and our grandchildren's lives are better. And the generations after us are prospering because of what we did, because of what we were a part of. Even if it's a small part, you're a part of it. And that's what you get to be a part of for the rest of your lives after this after 2024 and what I see coming and the rebuilding from this. 
And it might really get better in 2026 or 2027 once we've rebuilt. But it, it's going to just, it, it's going to build. It's going to build. And and I, I really believe that I didn't sign up for this, you know, when I was a kid. The 90s were a pretty great time to be a kid, uh, honestly. It, it really was. And even the early 2000s, minus the whole 9-11 thing, it was pretty good. The economy was pretty good. I, I could get good jobs. I, I kept moving up in the world. Um, there was a mostly good stuff, right? But in 08, we hit the end of that good time. It all that broke because we were living in a fake good time, but it was still a pretty good time. And it broke. And then we tried to rebuild that fakeness and it just, it kind of almost got back to it, almost got back to the good fake times again under Trump. And that's because he introduced some real stuff on top of the fake stuff that Obama had been doing. And, and then COVID hit and COVID became just like the end. And it was like, man, my whole life, I didn't sign up for this. I, you know, I wanted the world to keep getting better the way it had been going and, and keep improving and, and not have to go through a crazy hard time or, but this is our war. We didn't choose it. This is our war and it's, it's a different war, but it's more important because it's, it's for the soul of our country and, uh, and we're winning, we're winning and we're going to win. So anyways, that was, that was a rant. <laughs> that was a rant, but you guys can feel I, I tapped in some passion there. That's what I really believe is, is going on guys. So tomorrow, find your hope, find your hope and your excitement for new beginnings and, uh, and let's hunker down and come back Monday and be ready for April and the, the the next three quarters of this year, which are going to be wild. But let's go forward as if as if we as if we're already know we're winning, but we still just got to make it happen. Versus wondering if not we're going to win because I don't think we're, it's a wondering if we're going to win. I think it's we know we're going to win, but we just got to make it happen. And that's that's what uh, I think we're going to come into Monday. So. Thank you.